In this video, I'll walk you through how to set up Git on your laptop and how to connect to a remote GitLab server. A couple of things to note as we get started. The first one is that I have VPN running. I've connected through VPN. I've got Docker running, and I've got the latest version of the Docker container installed, and I've already opened up and started our studio. So the first thing we're going to do is set up Git to work on our laptop. And there's an add-in that can help with that. So let's click on the add-ins dropdown in our studio, scroll down and select Git Gadget. If the window is a little small, then you can click on this little button here and that'll make it a little bit bigger. So right now there's no information except the defaults. So we're going to provide some information so that Git knows who it's working with. So we're going to specify my username, specify an email address, And this is a test email address that I'm using here. Uh, what you should be using is your regular at ucsd.edu email address. And the first part of that email address is what you're going to use for your username. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to change the server that we're going to use. Now, by default, Git Gadget will use the gitlab.com server, which is free to use. However, uh, for the MSBA program at Rady, we have a specific server set up for this, and it is at the URL rsm dash gitlab.ucsd.edu. So https colon forward slash forward slash rsm dash gitlab.ucsd.edu and then forward slash api forward slash version 4, v4. The next thing is we need a GitLab token. So we don't have one yet. And so we need to go to the GitLab server and go get one. So here is the information about the server where we're going to try and get it. And if I click on create, what will happen is it'll open up a new tab in my browser where I'll be able to generate and create a token and then bring that token back and provide it to Git Gadget. So let's click on create. It's going to tell us to sign in. So let's make sure we're on the LDAP page. And then I'm going to provide RSM VNIJS and my password and sign in. So if you don't have an account yet, one will automatically be created for you. So I'm going to create a personal access token with a number of scopes, which basically means what that token will allow you to do. And so I want all the scopes. I'm going to choose as the name for this token, MSBA. Right, so now filled in. MSBA is going to be the name of the token. It's got all the scopes. Now let's click on Create Personal Access Token. And here's the token that it wants us to use. So I'm going to copy that into the clipboard and take it back to our studio server and provide it to GitLab. So I'm just going to paste that token in here. All right, so I'm going to set myself up here as a student. You should do the same. And then the base directory to clone repos into, I'm going to suggest that you use the following. So tilde forward slash git tilde forward slash git. So tilde is actually a shortcut to your home directory. And then git is going to be a directory that will house all of our projects, all of our repos. Okay, so we're going to use that. And then once that's done, we are quite a ways along already. We're going to click on the introduce button. So you'll see something happened here on the left. Some code got run. If you're curious exactly what code that was, we can hover over the introduce button and it'll show you exactly what git config commands were run to provide information to git about us. So once that's done, we can click on the Restart button or on the Done button. Either one of these will work. Now, unfortunately, our studio doesn't currently have a command that will completely reset our studio itself. And so it just says use Sessions Restart R to update your settings in memory. So let's do that. Session Restart R. And so what we've just done with this Introduce step is we've provided new information in the environment within which R and R Studio will work. And so our studio needs to be able to pick up that new, that changed information. And so to allow it to pick it up, we have to restart the R Studio session or R session. Okay. Now we can see here that that's done. So now we're going to go back to Git Gadget. But before we do that, I want to clean up a little bit. So this is a bit messy. I want to get rid of the content of the console. And the way I can do that is by pressing the Control key and holding it down and pressing on L. So Control L will clean out my console. Now the next step is to go back to add-ins and get gadget. 
and see if it remembered the information that we entered previously. And you can see that it did. Right, so here's my username, my email address, the server we're going to use, the GitLab token uh, that we're set up as a student, and the base directory. Now the final step here is to create an SSH key. What is an SSH key? It is a ridiculously long password, if you will, that will allow us to connect between our laptop and the remote GitLab server securely. So we can securely transfer information, code, data, and whatever you like. As you can see, there's no SSH key available as yet on our system. So how do we generate that? Well, there's a command for that, uh, a button that we can press to create that key. So press on SSH key. And that'll do two things. One is it will open up the correct page on the GitLab server where we're going to provide the SSH key. And if we go back to our Studio server and scroll down a little bit, we'll see that some stuff has happened here on the left. And you can see that there's a really long kind of code here. Now that is the SSH key. So we want the whole thing. We're gonna copy and paste the whole thing, including the start here. Again, the, all of it needs to be selected. I'm gonna copy that into the clipboard. Go back to the page where it says SSH keys and paste that enormously long key into this input. Now it's providing my email address as the default, but I don't like using that. I'm just gonna use information about the computer that is connected to the server with this key. So I'm gonna use MBP for MacBook Pro. I got this in 2016. And so that's gonna be the title that I give this particular key. Add key. And now there's information on the server about how we're gonna to try to connect. What key, what secret, handshake, password we're gonna to use to try to connect between this laptop and the remote server. Let's go back to our Studio server. And now what I'm gonna do, just to make sure again that this new information that we've created, this new uh, environmental information that's provided to my laptop is able to be picked up by our Studio. So I'm gonna click Done again. And then I'm going to clear the console, Control N. I'm gonna restart our Studio one more time. All right, now the next step is we're going to create our first repo on GitLab and clone that or copy that down to our laptop so that we can make changes to it and then push them back and forth between the server and my laptop. I'm just gonna clone a couple windows and now I'm gonna click here on GitLab to get to the home page. All right, so you'll see there's nothing here yet. I don't have any projects or anything like that. And so I can click here on this big button, create a project, click on that. I'm gonna create my first repo. So let's choose something simple like test one. You can see that the URL for that project is going to be specified as this piece plus the test one. It's gonna be a private repo, which means that currently only you would have access to it, but you could give other people access to it as well. And I'm going to initialize the repository with a readme file. Now this readme file you'll see in a second is something that allows me to describe what the project is about. So you always wanna do that. So let's initialize repository with a readme and I just click on this button to create the project. And there we go. So this is our first our studio project. The project was successfully created. Now, as you can see, there's not anything interesting here yet. This is just a a skeleton, if you will, or a, or a shell of what we're going to create. It says initial commit, we just authored this. And now what I want is to make a copy of this and pull that down to my laptop, make some changes, and then push those back up to the server, right? If I'm able to do that, then I've set up everything completely incorrectly. So to get information on where this repo is located, I'm gonna click on clone and get this URL looking uh, string, copy that into the clipboard, Okay, I'm gonna go back to our studio. Now, the very first time you're trying to connect your computer to a new remote GitLab server, you should uh, initiate that copying of the repo from the remote to your laptop through a terminal. Okay, it'll be easier after this, but the first time you do it, you should always do it via, via the terminal. All right, so here's my terminal. I can see where I'm, where I'm located. Now, remember where we were gonna put all of our repos. You remember what the tilde stands for? That's my home directory. That's where I am right now. 
So instead of there, I want to create a place for where this new test1 repo is going to go, and it's going to be inside my git directory. Okay, so cd git, press enter, and now I can see that there's only one thing there, which is the Docker directory that I created previously when I set up the Docker environment. So now how do I clone from a terminal? I type the command git, and then clone, and then I'm going to paste that URL looking thing that we got from the GitLab server. I paste that in. Now here's my command, git clone, and so on. Press enter. When I do that, it's going to say something like permanently added this host key because it's got this SSH key on the laptop. There's also a key on the GitLab server, and they are being verified against each other. And as soon as it sees that, it says, hey, I've got a verified user. I'm going to add that information to my records. And now I've cloned the repo. Now, how do I see that? Well, let's see what's in the Git uh, directory. We see the Docker is there, but now there's also another directory called test1. Okay, now what is in that directory? Just a readme file, right? nothing else. Now this was just the first time again we do it. Anytime you connect to a new server from a particular computer, you should do the git step, the git clone step, to establish that the authentication works. After that, we can use git gadget. And in fact, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to remove this directory and then redo the process, but now through git gadget. Okay, so how do I remove a directory? rm dash rf. And what's the directory I want to remove? Test1. So press enter. Now let's check if that worked. ls. Yes, only the Docker directory is left. Okay. Again, this is just a first step we have to do to make sure that the connection, the authentication between the laptop and the server works. We verified that it works. And so now we're able to move back to a slightly more user-friendly environment, which is going to be through the add-ins, and git gadget. All right, now how would I clone from here? See here we introduce ourselves. We're going to clone a repo. I'm gonna paste in what's still in my clipboard, right? Where test one, the repo on the server that I created previously is. It's gonna go into the tilde forward slash git directory, which is the git directory in my home directory. Now, if I want it to be something other than test1, then I can create a new name for it, but usually you'll just leave that as is. And um, I can say whether I want to open this in a current session or a new session, I'll just leave it as is, and then click on clone. And I can see it's doing something. It says cloning the repo. It says the server, or the R session is currently busy. Yeah, it is. It's running Git Gadget. Are you sure you want to quit? Yep, no problem. Press yes. Now what's going to happen is Git Gadget has looked at the repo and seen, I remember when we looked at this previously, there was only one file in it, just the readme file. And it's seen that there's not anything in that repo that reflects it as being an RStudio project. And we'll talk more about RStudio projects in class. But as soon as it sees that, Git Gadget will clone the repo, add an RPROJ file to signify that this is an RStudio project file, and then reopen RStudio with the repo that we just cloned as the actual project directory. Okay, so my home directory is now home git test one. I'm in the project RStudio project test one. And so now I can start making changes to the files in here and see if I can push them back to uh, the remote GitLab server. So let's open readme. Okay, so and what what is in readme? Not a whole lot. So I'm just gonna add something. Uh, let's say I'm going to add the following, which is my first change. Okay, not particularly interesting, but just to indicate what it is that I'm doing and where that I'm doing it. So, when we learn a bit more about Markdown, you'll see that the hashtag means a title of size one, and here I'm just adding some text. Okay, now here at the top, you'll see that RStudio makes the color of the file name different, and it adds this little star to indicate that I've made changes but haven't saved them yet. So let's go ahead and save. I can click on the icon here. All right, now that it, that visually signifies that I've made my change. And now let's go to the Git tab. And we'll see that a bunch of, bunch of things has been added. Now, what was on the repo initially? Just the readme file. Okay. And now what it's saying is, hey, some files have been added to the repo. That was done by Git Gadget and some changes have been made. 
So I'm going to click on the commit button so we can get a bit more information about what's going on. So git ignore, that was a file that was added. There's just some information in this repo that git should ignore, so not push back and forth between the laptop and the uh, remote server. Uh, readme. Okay, interesting. So here are the stuff that we've added that's changed relative to the version that's on the remote server is in green. There's also an rproj file, which Git Gadget added to make sure that it knows that this is an RStudio project. And there's also another file that's added in case you want to use uh, VS Code with this project later on. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to add all of these changes, commit them, and committing here means taking a snapshot of the current state of the repo and any changes that might have been made. Uh, and to do that, I need to stage the changes. So in indicate which changes I want to keep and which changes I want to commit to take that snapshot. So I've staged all of those. And then we're going to provide a commit message, which is my first change. And I'm going to commit that. And this is a, um, a current snapshot of the state of the repo and any changes that I've made versus the prior commit. So click on commit. It shows us some things that have been changed. And click on close. And you'll see here at the top left that says your branch or your repo is ahead of Origin Master. And what that means is the current snapshot, the current state of the repo on my laptop is different, in fact, is further along than the version that is on the remote server. So let's take a look at that. All right, so we have our first change here. Let's go to the repo. Now let's just refresh in case we want to see if anything might have changed. Nope. So if I look at README, the only thing that's in there is just test one. Nothing else, okay? But if I look at the version that's on my laptop, right, running on localhost, there we've added a change. So how do we propagate the change that we made locally onto the remote server? We can go back to the commit tab and click on the push icon. So what this will do is take the changes, take the commit information that we provided and push that up to the remote server. Push. And there we go. So let's click close. Now let's go back to the remote server and see if those changes are indeed available. Now it doesn't show that right away. You just have to hit refresh to see anything that's new. And there we go. The changes I made on my laptop have now been pushed up to the remote server and I can see the new state. Okay, so that's one way to make changes, commit them to your local computer. Again, that's just a, a record of different snapshot changes over time. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you one alternative way in which you can push changes up to the remote server through Git Gadget. Okay, so let's say I want to make another change. My second change. There we go. As you can see, it hasn't been saved yet. So let's go ahead and save. There we go. And now you'll see, as soon as I did that in the Git tab, something changed here, right? It's, it's seeing that the Git, uh, sorry, that the readme.md file has been changed. I want to show you how you could commit the second change. We can do it the same way we did before, right? We can do commit and then stage, sorry, stage and then commit, or we could use Git Gadget for this. So let me show you what that would look like. Either way is equivalent. So click on Git Gadget. Now where can I push changes up to the server? Through the sync tab. I'm going to make this a bit bigger so we have a bit more room. Okay. And the first thing I'm going to do is click on stage. Now, Git Gadget, it doesn't allow me to choose which things um, are staged or potentially committed. It just takes everything that's changed in the repo relative to the prior state, and it stages everything. So let's click on that. And as soon as, as, soon as I do that, I get a dropdown that shows me exactly what changed. Right, so what changed? Something in the readme.md file. It shows in green here that I added my second change, and that's it. All right. I want to do a commit message. Let's do my second change. You can put here whatever you like. Click on commit. Again, that's going to take a snapshot of the changes relative to the prior commit. Click on commit. Okay, that seems to be done. Now the last thing I need to do is press push to push the changes that I've created, right? Just adding that line, my second change, and push that up to the server. There we go says it's complete. Now here's a little convenient check. If you want to just see, did it indeed work? Did the information that I 
changed and added here on my local system. Did that get up to the server? I can just press the check button. As soon as I do that, it's going to try to open up information about the last commit, which I called my second change, and show me exactly what changed during that commit. OK, so we've gone through a lot. Uh, this will become a lot more comfortable and familiar after you've practiced it a few times. But I hope that in, in this video you get a sense of how to set up Git and how to start using it with a remote GitLab server.